Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's A to Z sewing technique series video, I'm going to be teaching you guys what seams you can use to sew knit fabrics on your basic sewing machine. Before we jump into what type of stitches that we can use, let's talk really quickly about the type of needle that you should be using on knit fabrics. Now, most needles that are available are really made to be used for woven fabrics. There's only a small handful of needles that you can use on stretchy fabrics. So the types of needles that you're looking out for are going to be called either a jersey needle, a stretch needle, or a ballpoint needle. There are some slight differences between these needles, um, but without going into it too much, for most projects, any needle that you choose, as long as it is made specifically for knit fabrics, it's generally going to work for most of your projects. So the only difference between these needles and a regular needle that you would use on woven fabrics is that the tip is slightly rounded so it's going to actually push the fibers to the side as you sew rather than pierce directly through your fabric. So if you use the wrong needle on stretchy fabric, expect there to be some holes and expect them to grow the more the fabric stretches. So be sure that you are using the correct type of needle and that you're using a fresh needle because an old needle might also have a barb on it, which will create a hole in your fabric as well. Okay guys, the first stitch that we have to talk about is our basic zigzag stitch. And I have it up here on the screen. This is exactly what it looks like. You can adjust the stitch width and the stitch length to vary the way that it looks or how much of the seam allowance that you want it to take up. But the reason that we are doing this one first is because it is the OG stitch when it comes to sewing stretchy fabrics. And that is because on even the most basic sewing machines, if it has more than a straight stitch, it's guaranteed to have a zigzag stitch. And the reason that this stitch is so widely available on sewing machines regardless of price point is because it is such a versatile stitch. It can pretty much work on any stretch fabrics that you would need to have a stretch stitch of some kind on. Let's talk about some of the cons of this stitch. Now, one of the biggest complaints that a lot of home sewers face after they start to get a little bit more experience is that this stitch to them feels and looks a little bit more home ec quality than it does looking professional because you don't see a zigzag stitch in a lot of mass-produced clothing. The other con with using this type of stitch is that it can sometimes create a tunneling effect in between your stitches and what I mean by that is they'll just be like a pucker in the middle of your stitch um, and that's usually because your stitch width is too wide and sometimes you just have to play around with that um, or the stitch length or the tension that sort of thing to get it looking perfect um, but that's really the only downside as far as functionality goes. Another type of zigzag stitch that you can use is a three-step zigzag stitch and it, instead of going one stitch to the right and then one stitch to the left, it does three stitches in either direction and this is a great stitch to cut down on the tunneling that happens in a regular zigzag stitch. So if you are experiencing any kind of tunneling or puckering or anything weird like that and you can't seem to fix it with adjusting your tension or your stitch width, stitch length, that sort of thing, then I would suggest using a three-step zigzag. It's also used a lot when Whenever you are sewing um, elastic or if you are wanting to overcast um, the edge of some fabric that sort of thing so if you notice that whenever you are sewing seams and they don't really bother you look wise but you're noticing that they're a little bit on the bulkier side sometimes you might want to switch to a three-step zigzag stitch to help cut down on that bulk because it does make a much flatter seam than what a regular zigzag stitch will do the only real con to this stitch is the same as what a regular zigzag stitch is. It's really just purely aesthetic. Um, for functionality, it works great. And in fact, I would say it works better in most cases than a regular zigzag stitch. The only difference is that you can't go as narrow of a stitch as what you can do with a zigzag. You can get very small zigzag stitch, um, but you can't get too, too small with a, a three-step zigzag stitch. So just bear that in mind whenever you are choosing what stitch to use on your projects. Okay, the next stitch up is called a lightning stitch or a stretch stitch. So this is basically the same thing as a zigzag stitch. It's just slanted slightly. It's just slightly skewed. So it looks like a lightning bolt. It's called different things on different machines. So just kind of look for something that resembles a lightning bolt and you'll have the right stitch. Okay, so the benefit of using this type of stitch is that because of it being slightly slanted the way it is, your actual stitching will be much more narrow than what a regular zigzag stitch would do. And so it's going to look a little bit more streamlined, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more professional. And so this is a major benefit to a lot of people. 
Um, the other thing about it being the shape that it is, is that it's not going to have as much tunneling as you might experience if you are using a regular zigzag stitch. Now, as far as cons go, um, one of the bigger issues with this is, as you can see when I'm stitching out my first tryout for this stitch, is that it is creating a wave in the fabric. You do have to kind of adjust the stitch length and the tension and that sort of thing to get the right look for your fabric that you're using. So just be sure that you're actually trying this out on a scrap piece of fabric before you actually do it with your project because it is a very difficult stitch to actually pick out of your fabric compared to other ones. Up next is one of my favorite stitches to use on knit fabrics and that's called a reinforced straight stitch. And this one is very similar to a zigzag stitch in that it has that same back and forth motion but it's going to be going vertically so instead of going side to side you'll go two stitches forward, one stitch back and then it'll repeat and what that does is it allows the fabric to still stretch but it will look like a straight stitch. And if some of you guys might have watched my previous video on flat felled seams, you will know that I used this one for that video and it works great on denim and it's a very strong stitch and that's why you're using it on denim because of that extra reinforcement on it. So it's very versatile and can be used for a lot of different projects. So some of the cons of using this type of stitch is that it's really only good on more stable knits because it doesn't have a whole lot of stretch in it. And while it's not common for you to be able to pop a stitch with the, whenever you're using a reinforced stitch, it is very possible that on a thinner, more stretchy fabric for you to actually rip a hole in your fabric if you're not careful. So I really only recommend this on more stable knits. Um, and also very similarly to the lightning bolt stitch, it does take a little bit of messing around with to get the tension and all that stuff looking right to keep it from puckering too much. But overall, I love this stitch so much. I really only use it for top stitching purposes because I do want there to be able to be some stretch in my seams most of the time. But for that purpose, it's very, very helpful if you are only able to use a sewing machine on your knit projects. The next stitch is specifically made for sewing knit seams and it's called a stretch seam overcast stitch. And what's great about this stitch is that it is going to not only sew your seam, but it's also going to overcast the raw edges of your seam allowance. So the biggest benefit of this stitch is obviously that it is a two for one and that it is going to be sewing your seam while at the same time finishing your raw edge. And so it does create a little bit more of a professional look. So if you're interested in using this stitch in a decorative way, um, I'm actually doing that right now so I can show you guys. But basically if you can play around with the um, settings on your machine a little bit. You might not have to, um, but some people they might have to adjust some things here and there but basically you will just stitch just slightly off um, the edge of your raw fabric and if you want a more clean and polished look you can definitely hem it first and then do this but you'll stitch slightly off of it and it is going to create kind of a shell or scalloped edge to your fabric it's very small and subtle but if it's something that you're interested in doing this is potentially a good stitch for you to use for that purpose as well so the biggest con to this stitch isn't actually the stitch itself, it's the fact that it is not available on a cheaper model of sewing machines. Um, if your sewing machine has over 10 stitches, it's probably going to be on there. But um, I know there's some machines that are like in the $100, you know, $130 range and under, that sort of thing, where um, you might only have five stitches on your machine and this probably won't be one of them. But if you have like between 10 and 20 stitches on your machine, there's a good chance that this one's going to be on there um, because it is used quite often. So just keep that in mind if you are looking to buy a sewing machine, you might want to save a little bit of extra money um, up before you go shopping uh, just so you can afford a couple, few more stitches because even though you think you only need a small handful, um, you might find that it might have been worth your trouble to just bring for a little bit higher end machine um, just so you can get some of these stitches. Next up is called a flat lock stitch and I personally love this stitch. I think it looks very clean and professional. Um, it adds a decorative element if you like the look of it while it is also extremely functional. Okay, so let's talk some of the benefits of using a flat lock stitch. Um, one of my favorite reasons for using this is that it is commonly used in active wear and I think that it really perks up something that looks otherwise pretty bland and boring because let's face it, 
workout leggings and tops they all kind of look the same like you generally can't tell the difference from one brand to the other so I really like using a flat lock stitch for that purpose if you swap out the thread color um, you can add some design interest to your garment um, the other thing that I really like about it is that it is an extremely professional looking stitch because this exact stitch is used in commercial sewing on ready-to-wear garments every single day even at the clothing label that I'm currently working at um, we don't have a flat lock machine and a lot of our contractors don't either because we sew everything domestically pretty much um, but to, in order to get that um, streetwear meets activewear look that's so popular right now um, what they actually do is they'll take a cover stitch machine and they'll sew it on the wrong side of the garment so that way the underneath side of a cover stitch um, will be on the outside and it looks a lot like a flat lock stitch. So the stitch is not commonly used for joining seams in a traditional way. Typically, if you're going to be joining any fabrics together with this stitch, you're going to overlap them. And you'll see this on a lot of garments like Free People has, for instance, where they will um, flat lock stitch on top of two overlap seams and they'll actually leave the edge of it of the seam raw on the outside as like a decorative element so that's used oftentimes but I also really like to use this stitch whenever I'm creating my hems so typically whenever I'm creating a hem using this stitch what I'll do is I will fold my fabric up as usual like any other hem but I will position the raw edge of the hem in the center of my presser foot and what that will do is it will do some stitching on either side of the raw edge and what that will do is protect your raw edge from you know getting any nicks or anything in it that might end up causing um, runs in your fabric especially if you're working with a more delicate fabric and the reason that this stitch is so good for this is because it is one of the denser stitches that is available when you're working with knits on a sewing machine so the biggest downside of this stitch is just like the last stitch that we talked about and it's that it is just not available on the super cheap models of sewing machines. So just like I said last time, if you are looking to invest in a sewing machine, you really might consider saving up just a little bit longer so you can purchase a machine that has more stitches because you will be surprised at how quickly your skills will grow and you will end up wanting some of these machines with a little bit more bells and whistles than a regular entry level machine will have so just keep that in mind if you are on the hunt for one currently the next stitch that i want to show you guys is a stitch made specifically for sewing hems and stretchy fabrics and that is the stretch blind hem stitch now if you guys have been watching my channel for a while and you've seen some of my previous videos in this series, I did a video on how to sew a blind hem and I will link that in the video and in the description somewhere. Um, but I showed how to use a woven blind hem stitch as well as a stretch blind hem stitch. And basically they do the same thing, it just depends on what kind of fabric that you're using. But pretty much all it does is it creates a hem without showing any visible stitches on the outside of your garment. So it works really well if you're using it for professional work clothes like trousers or a pencil skirt that sort of thing that you don't want the sportier look of top stitching to be visible on it um, and so a lot of people they'll just rely on the woven blind hem stitch but a stretch blind hem is really useful as well and I think the reason that it doesn't get used as often is because when we're thinking about blind hems typically we know to use them for tailored garments that you don't want top stitching visible on right because it makes it look that much more professional a lot of times we won't want to put top stitching on something that we just spent hours hand sewing like pad stitching and that sort of thing on and so we'll turn to using a blind hem stitch but there are reasons that you would want to use a stretch blind hem stitch as well um, and one of those reasons is if your fabric is heavily adorned with sequined or any other of those types of embellishments that are more difficult to sew so some reasons you might not want to use a regular top stitch on your sequined or embellished fabric is that a, you could break a needle on some of these embellishments, especially whenever it's very heavily beaded or sequined or it has those um, mirror embellishments on them. Those sometimes can break needles as well. Um, the other thing is that you don't want to cover up what is making the fabric so special and distracting from the embellishment with an ugly top stitch. So whenever I used to work for a drill team manufacturer, um, what they would do is because we did a lot of the sequining um, ourselves, they would just not put any sequin where the seam allowance or the hem allowance would be at. But if you were working with um, something that was embellished all over, like you're working with yards of it, 
Um, what you can do is trim away the extra sequin and that sort of thing um, that's gonna be trapped inside of your hemline where you're going to actually be sewing. And you trim that away and then all you have to worry about is the catch stitch on the blind hem stitch itself, the part that actually catches to the outside of the fabric. Um, but typically, because it's just one stitch every four stitches, you have to worry about it a whole lot less, and usually you're not going to have any issues. And even if you are experiencing some problems, you can use the hand wheel on your machine to go slowly as you're doing it, and then it's going to decrease the likelihood of you breaking your needle or breaking a sequin or whatever it is. And I think that this is a really great um, stitch to use for these types of fabrics that is extremely underutilized, so I really encourage you guys to use this. Um, if you end up using any types of fabrics like this that require it. Okay guys, here is what my final stretch blind hem stitch looks like. This is the side with the fold. This is the other side of the raw edge fabric. Ignore my messy start and stop. I have thread caught in there that I didn't pull out. But um, here you can see that it's just one little catch on the fold of the fabric so whenever you actually unfold the fabric um, you're only going to see just the tiniest of stitches and if you match it like you're supposed to then you're not going to actually be able to see it at all. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about your sewing machine and what kind of stitches that you can use on your knit fabrics. If you like this video, go ahead and check out the other videos in this series and see if you can learn something else new.